Robin John, researchers at Tennessee Tech want to use hydrogen fuel cells to power aircraft. So right now it takes 30 megawatts for one airplane to take off. That's equivalent to powering 6,000 homes, the same number as are in the city of Seymour. NASA thinks if we stop burning fuel in airplanes, it could slow global warming. Inside this chamber, behind the insulation. I'm a huge fan of fuel cells. Dr. Rory Roberts and his grad students at Tennessee Tech University think this is the future of air travel. We proposed a project using uh, ammonia, which is a carbon-free fuel. These fuel cells would take ammonia and turn it into electricity. You don't burn anything, so the only byproduct is water. Fuel cells and batteries are very similar in the physics in which they operate. It's like a battery, but you can pump in fuel instead of only using what's stored inside, and it's more efficient. The good thing about that is you could refuel it, uh, hopefully in minutes versus charging. Engineers can't use batteries like with electric cars because they're too heavy. Dr. Roberts says he hopes fuel cells will cut down on the amount of carbon dioxide airplanes pump into the atmosphere. Right now, airplanes contribute about an eighth of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. So we won't have any carbon dioxide in the exhaust. His team is using this chamber to see if fuel cells could work in the air where airplanes fly. So not only at a you know, the right temperature and such, but at the appropriate pressures. If the project goes well, NASA's targeting 2050. For the first time, commercial airplanes will fly using fuel cells. It's going to take a long time because it's a very challenging problem. So Tennessee Tech is one of five universities collaborating on this project, and NASA has given them $8 million for the research. Robin and John. All right. Vinay Simla.